welcome to a Go Engineer presentation for SolidWorks Enterprise PDM. Today we're going to be looking at some advanced file data card techniques. In particular, we'll be focusing on some techniques that you can use when you have multi-approver workflows, and those workflows are writing multiple approved by and dates for your various approval roles. There are a number of techniques that we can use when hiding and showing fields on data cards, and those techniques are what we'll be exploring in today's session. Here we have a data card in an Enterprise PDM Windows Explorer file view. In this example data card, what we're focusing on are the approval fields on the left-hand side. So this company, Acme Corp, has three approvals required in their workflow, variously engineering, quality, and regulatory approvals. Their workflows are writing approved by and approved date to all three fields. The issue, though, is that the workflow routing is fairly sophisticated and according to certain circumstances one, two, or all three of the approvals may be required. So from release to release it's not the case that you would always need all three approvals. To the right on this data card you see a table of data. Their document approvals are based on a function of both region and document class. So for this company their regions are NorCal, SoCal, and Texas. Their document classes are A, B, C, and D. And so in the grid you can see that, for example, a NorCal Class A approval requires engineering and quality, whereas a Texas Class D requires engineering, quality, and regulatory. And there are a couple of instances where, for example, NorCal Class D is not an existent type, so that's not applicable. The simple approval table on the left is the easiest thing to do on a data card from the standpoint of an approval array. In this case, all the fields are just always showing, and they'll be filled in if required, and if not, they'll be left blank. In the second example, though, we've used a slightly more sophisticated array. What we have is the same approval grid, but this time we've actually driven the visibility of these approval fields by variables region and product class. So, for example, if we select a NorCal class C, This table is then hiding quality and regulatory because only engineering is a required approval. Now in the background what's likely happening is that this company is actually using the region and product class variables to help route files in the workflows. So this just makes use of those same variables to then hide and show the approval table. And so we see here a table that is working hand in hand with the approval requirements to hide and show fields as necessary. So for example, a SoCal Class B approval would require only engineering and quality, and so on and so forth. Now there's two things here at play. One functionality we'll look at is called control logic, and that's the primary function being used to hide and show fields. The second functionality we're using that is taking place here is a list dependency between region and product class. So for example, if we have SoCal selected, you'll notice that class D is not an applicable choice according to our approval requirements. Same would be the case for NorCal. Class D is not a document class for that region. If we go to Texas, class B is not an allowed document class for Texas. So let's look at the back end on this data card and we'll see what's going on here. So the way this was set up is that each field is using control logic which is a means by which you can apply a set of logic based rules to say when and if the field is either grayed out or hidden. And those rules in this case are being driven by the values of both region and product class collectively. So each one of these controls and labels would have the control logic applied. This can be fairly labor intensive, but once you get certain fields built with control logic, then copy pasting from there makes it somewhat easier. You can then modify those rules to suit the next field that you're programming. Now the other thing that this card is doing, so for example with the Texas Region Class B approval, Class B should not be a selectable option for a Texas Region document. So the way that we've done that is that we have made product class controlled by the region variable. So we have different lists set up 
that will be provided for product class depending on the selection for region. So region can evaluate as NorCal, SoCal, or Texas, and based on that value, we're using different card lists. So this is how we can make sure that the values that should not be selected are not selected. This works just fine, but we would run into one problem with this approval grid, which is that, for example, if we selected a Texas Class A that requires engineering and regulatory, we're going to have what I refer to as a gap tooth effect. So here, because we removed quality, and this is a straight table array, we've just blanked out the middle line. So it's working for, say, a Class D, because that's using all three lines or for a class C because that's getting rid of the bottom two so it's rolling up from the bottom but in this case we've got a little gap tooth here where we've taken out the middle approval row. Now this might be fine or not depending on how large your table is but in certain cases it's nice for the table to kind of grow and shrink dynamically so to take up the least amount of room for a given approval sequence. That's what we have going on in the next example. So in this case, we are again using control logic and the list dependencies as well between region and product class. But in this case, we've made the table a little more dynamic. If we switch to a class D approval and add regulatory back in or switch back to a class A, the table is dynamically updating and it's moving regulatory up as the second approval. So we're getting the same effect as in the second example. We're hiding and showing quality in this case but we're also then moving regulatory up and down as needed to minimize the space required on the data card. So let's take a look at what's going on here. How is this card doing this? If we look closely, what's going on under the hood is that we have anticipated that regulatory may need to be shown on the second and third rows depending on the approval requirements. So here, if I move these fields slightly, you'll see that I've hidden another row of regulatory approvals right underneath the quality approvals. So that's the trick, is that the control logic that is driving the visibility of these fields has been programmed to show regulatory in two different positions. And in the positions where regulatory is supposed to show on the second row, quality is being hidden in those instances. So when we go from a class D to a class A, the fields are updating as desired. So to make your approval array dynamic, using control logic can be very effective. It can be very time consuming and the logic rules to hide and show the fields as required can be very complex, however. So there is another option that will get us the same effect that can be a little simpler depending on the circumstances. So in this example, what we're using is a tab control instead of control logic to hide and show the various required fields. Here what we've had to do is make a page of approval fields for each signature permutation. So I've labeled these according to the required approval. So this is the EQR, this is the ER for engineering regulatory, EQ for engineering quality, and E for engineering only. So the secret here is that a tab control can be driven by a variable, but only a single variable. So the advantage with the control logic example on the previous page is that control logic can hinge on the values of one or multiple variables. In this case, a tab control can only be hidden or shown based on the value of a single variable. So let's look at the effect of this on the front end first. So here what you see is the tab control and depending on the selection that we make on region and product, an approval route code to the right evaluates as EQR. So because the tab control can only hide and show based on a single variable, what we've had to do is come up with a way to concatenate the value of the approval route code based on region and product class. So approval route then is a product of both of those variable inputs. But in all other respects, this would work just like the control logic example on the previous page. So for example, a Texas class A requires engineering and regulatory, and a class D requires all three. And this table becomes dynamic and hides and shows the correct sequence of approval fields. Let's look at the actual card again. So the advantage is that 
Constructing the tab device is fairly straightforward. You just need n number of tabs for each approval permutation, and then you're simply copy-pasting the fields onto each tab that match with that field. Now from the point of view of the tab control, you're telling the tab control to hide and show a certain page based on a variable. In this case, we've called it route code. The trick really has come when we've needed to apply the value of route code as the product of two other variable fields, both region and product class. So depending on those selections, that's going to come up with a different approval code. The first thing is that the approval route code is using an input formula, think of an Excel type formula, to evaluate the value of product class. And for this card, the value of product class is a little more than it seems. And we'll look at that in a second. Now product class is being driven as a function of region, just like in the previous example. So it is a list controlled by a variable, except that we're using different list sources in this example. So in this case, of necessity, our product class lists are a little more complex. Let's look at those. From the admin tool, these lists are of a type text with alias. So if you look at this list, the way that we've done this is on the left is the displayed value, class A, B, or C. In the alias column is the actual value that will be written to the product class control. So in this case, you can see class A, B, and C with a tilde separator and then the approval code to the right. We have a combined list of class and approval codes that correspond to that class. So class B NorCal is an EQR. A class C NorCal is an engineering only, etc. So let's go back to our data card. So now that we have that multi-list input, it's then this route code that is evaluating that and is separating out the the approval route information from the product class using this function. Once you put all that together, then you have a data card that acts in exactly the same way using a tab control. So if we look at, for example, NorCal class C, that should be engineering only. Or a NorCal class B, which should be all three. That's an EQR. That would be the same approval route code as for a Texas class D both EQRs. So in this case, our tab control is much simpler to implement than the control logic in the previous example, but we've needed more sophisticated lists and input formulas to derive that functionality. I have one final example for you today. I had to build this for a recent customer of ours, and in this case they had an array of checkbox controls that were determining which approvals were required in the workflow based on a fairly complicated parallel approval sequence. So it was the case that for any given document, certain approvals would be required, and the users would have to flag the required approvals on the data card. Now this got fairly complicated for this company because they have a lot of different documents, and being a med device company, this required very specific requirements for very specific document types and there are a lot of different document types. So in this case we came up with a technique very similar to what was shown in the previous example using a tab control to fill out an array of checkboxes based on a list choice. So in this case we're driving the value of the array of checkboxes based on a list. So for example a quality manual would need executive quality and regulatory whereas a process requirements matrix would require quality, regulatory, development, and manufacturing, etc. And so you can see that depending on the selection of this list, the checkbox array is filled out automatically. The other advantage here is that depending on what choice is the default requirement for a given document, they needed the ability to go in and override that. So they can say in this case we don't need development but we need clinical. So you can always override manually but this provided a quick way for this company to fill out the approval requirements for a given document based on a single list selection. So let's look at how we've done that. It's very similar to what we showed in the previous example. We have a checkbox array that is driven by 
this document type list. Now the secret is really the document type list. It's very similar to what we showed previously which is that we've used a text with alias type list where the displayed value is your pick list and the alias then is the value that is being written to the variable. So in this case the list is always document type with a separator character and then a binary array of zeros and ones. And this is what is driving the checkboxes to be either turned on or off depending on that sequence of zeros and ones. So you see there is binary code for each document type. So once we have a list that can write that value, the trick then is to get these checkboxes to be turned on or off by that choice. The secret to this is hidden in the background here, which is an array of edit box controls tied to input formulas. So each input formula for each checkbox is going to evaluate the value of the document type list and separate out all the ones and zeros from one another. So each edit box function or input formula knows to pick out a particular one or zero from the array placeholder. So this one's always looking for a particular position within that binary number and so on for the rest of them. They're all picking out an exact place in that binary number. And that's what's causing these checkboxes to be turned on or off as a function of the document type list. So this is a little bit different but I thought in spirit very similar to hiding and showing approval uh, fields. So you could do something very similar in that case. So just to recap Today we've looked at a couple of different techniques. We've looked at list dependencies, so the ability to have one list value be driven by the pick choices from another list. And in that case that was important so that we could make sure we control which classes could be selected per region. Another functionality we've looked at is control logic. So control logic has been very helpful to hide certain fields when that approval requirement is not applicable to this region or document class. We looked at two examples. We looked at using control logic to simply hide and show and then we looked at a more advanced technique where we actually used multiple instances of the same controls so that we could hide and show the same approval fields on different lines of our table. And finally, we looked at a tab control that is controlled by variable. And in this case, we were able to use different pages on the tab to also show the different approval sequences that are required. So I hope this gave you some good ideas for things that would help you spice up your data cards. So on behalf of Go Engineer, thank you so much for watching this presentation. Mm -hmm.